Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. So many of us are hard on ourselves. We judge ourselves. We look at other people. We think that we're not potentially good enough or things that we do, we, if you will, beat ourselves up over it. We shame ourselves. Well, let's not do that. Let's talk about that and, and see why we do it and how we can get around that. And she helps a lot of people heal through many different ways. She's the founder and healer of Mindful Healing Heart. She's also an acupuncturist. Winnie Chan Wang joins us again today. Hi, Winnie. Hi, Steve. I'm so happy to be here with you and all the listeners today. Yeah, it's great to have you here. I just want to say you look great. What, what you're wearing, is that is that something traditional? I don't, my friend is Chinese. I, 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 obviously, he, he wouldn't be wearing that, so I don't know. So tell me. Yeah, so I am wearing a traditional Chinese clothing. And, you know, that really leads into the topic of today, which is, Steve, you just gave me a compliment that I am beautiful. But how many of us have the ability to receive compliments? I'm going to confess, actually, I have a lot of shame around my appearance, believe it or not. You know, I feel like I've I'm fat since I was four years old. And, you know, I feel like my arms are too fat or like, you know, there's something you don't understand, Steve, but women get it. There's something called a bra fat, which is like when you put a bra around yourself in the back, there's like something that squeezes out. And then, you know, there's also like muffin top, right? When I put on my jeans, there's something that spills over. And, you know, I have shame around my body, even though if you ask 10 men and 10 women, I would say at least eight out of 10 people would say, Winnie, you have a beautiful face. You have beautiful eyes. You have beautiful smile. And they would say, you have a beautiful body. You know, I fluctuate somewhere between size four and size six, but really, most people would be happy to have my body, but yet I'm looking at my bra fat, I'm looking at my muffin top, and I feel shame when I look at myself in the mirror in the morning. And it's so silly if we pause and think about the shame because it depends on culture, it depends on time, right? 2000 years ago, our standard of beauty is different than that of today, right? And what is considered thin or fat in the Chinese culture is different than in America, than in Latin America. And so how very silly of me to feel shame in my body because I could be considered fat in one culture and considered worthy of worship in another culture. So. And that's the same with so many categories of shame. You know, a lot of people also have shame around their intelligence or their wealth. You know, like, I don't have enough money. But it's like relative to who, right? Because, okay, so maybe if you live in America, you feel like I don't have enough money compared to so-and-so who has white picket fences. But, you know, if you go to Africa in some places where they don't have enough food, they're going to be like, why are you ashamed with how much money you have? Like, I would kill to have the amount of abundance that you have. And so all of us get stuck in this shame, but it's kind of empty. It is. And I, I try to rationalize, analyze why we look at ourselves. And, and I do the same exact thing. Trust me. I could look in the mirror in the morning and say, what's this? What is that? Why? Why? But I don't know why we focus on those negative things when there's so many beautiful, positive things that we could be looking at. And yes, we can say, you know, social media doesn't help because now you have a comparison to other people, friends, celebrities, whatever it may be. But 
people have been hard on themselves and shaming themselves for 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 many 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 years centuries even why do you think Winnie? why why don't we focus on those things instead of just looking at ourselves and saying yeah that looks good or that's a really you know you have a very good uh that you know asset to yourself whatever it might be why do you think that is that's a great question steve so i'm gonna bring an analogy to our iphone Right. So our iPhone is running a certain software. And then periodically we get to download iPhone updates because the old one has bugs in it. Right. So where does the iPhone 13 come from? It comes from iPhone 12, 11, 10, 9, all the way back to iPhone 1. And before iPhone 1, there was, you know, Motorola flip phones and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So understand that the way we create suffering you know looking at the world through the lenses of what's wrong it comes from our parents it comes from our ancestors right it comes from this survival mentality right you know in the old days there is you know wars and famine and then we think that by constantly looking at the world with what's wrong, what can go wrong, it's survival of the fittest, right? If I'm constantly prepared for, I could get fired from the job. And so that motivates me to have a savings account. Or, you know, if I do this, I could upset my boyfriend or girlfriend, right? So, you know, in a way, this negative bias in our brain is protecting us from getting into trouble. So in a way we get to be really grateful because all that shame and what's wrong and what can go wrong, that negative mindset, it has helped us move along. And partly it's because why are we in this survival mindset is because we are disconnected from knowing God, source, universe, and all of the help that is available in the spiritual realm. You've, I want to say you've said something very powerful there, and I think it's a lot of us don't realize it. I think it's part of evolution. If you go back to like even cave man times that we were always on guard we're always you know watching to to survive you know what if somebody comes and takes my food i gotta get out there and fight um i gotta i gotta get food for tonight and it, we're always on edge so we're always looking at the negative because of evolution instead of now looking at the positive i think we're just wired that way yeah because when we're disconnected from god then you know, let's say I need $100 to survive. If I don't know God, then I have to work really hard, bust my ass to get to $100. And that actually might lead me to lie, cheat, and steal. Because if I think that it's survival of the fittest, Steve, I want to lie, cheat, and steal from you so that I can make sure I have $100, right? That's what we really see in society is we're always trying to manipulate for our gain because we have this, I got to make $100 to meet my own needs. But what if we only need to make $50? What if the other $50 can come from God, right? Like, that's what I always say. Like, what if God is like a 24 seven ATM and every time you don't have enough money, you just say, God, give me money and God gives you money. Right. And the things that we can ask God for, you know, I've put in my 10,000 hours of praying. <laughs> so, you know, in California, we have this fast food chain called in and out and in and out, there's something on the secret menu called animal style cheeseburger. Now, if you walk into any in and out, this animal style 
it's not written. So it's almost like there's a special way to pray where if you ask God for something 10 times, you will get it 10 times. And so the secret is not to ask God for money. The secret is to ask God for the power to serve, right? Imagine, you know, if I'm in the service industry and I ask God to connect me with clients so that I can serve or God give me more power or more energy or more bandwidth, more courage, more love, increase my capacity to serve. And I promise you, if you pray 10 times, you will get 10 times the empowerment so you can serve better, you can connect to more clients, right? So money is just a byproduct because when you serve more, you're naturally going to get more business and more money. So don't ask God for more money. Ask God to give you more power and opportunities to serve. I have a friend of mine. She uh, She's a fitness trainer. And she always says that I'm not going to teach you. I'm not going to give you fish. I'm going to teach you how to fish so that you'll always have fish. And it really, it makes perfect sense. And I see what you're saying too, you know, it's, it's give and give back because if you, you pray that way, whether if, if you believe in that, you're going to help others and they're going to help you as opposed to just saying, Hey, give me money <laughs> because it's probably not going to work. Yeah. And you know, I'm such a nerd with four science degree <laughs> degrees that, you know, I have this curiosity to know God and to know spirit and to know truth. So, you know, every day I read the Bible, I study Taoist texts, Buddhist texts, Hindu texts, and I make friends of all traditions because, you know, if I want to write a research paper, I don't want to just have research from one source. I want to have research from many different books and authors so that whatever I present is closer to the truth. And so I really love that aspect. You know, I always say, if you want to know God, don't take my word for it. You go and be a scientist, right? You go and experiment and read books and do your own research. And, you know, if you pray and your, answer, your prayer gets answered, then you know what God is. Don't take my word for it. You go experience it. I can say based on my experience that if you ask for a sign and you're open to it and you quiet the noise, you're going to see it or you're going to get it. And I've done it many times and I, the proof is there. Where did it come from? I, you know, maybe you believe in God, maybe you believe in a universe, maybe a source, whatever it might be, but you have to be open to see it and accept it. And so many of us don't because we're so busy or we're so busy shaming ourselves or so busy, you know, trying to make money or doing life that you don't see it. So yeah, I, uh, I, I think there's a lot of, a lot of validity in, in asking, in asking. Yeah. So I'm going to take a moment to connect to something that a lot of the listeners might have, which is maybe they have what I call the iPhone neck because they're always, you know, bending over or the, the, the computer neck because they're always typing. Yeah. And what happens to your spine when you are curved this way is that you are naturally going to have jaw pain, right? So the, the spine and the jaw, you know, it's like, if my natural spine is supposed to be like this, but then I'm like this, then, you know, and it's really funny because this jaw pain is then linked to tight hips, right? Also because we sit in chairs all day and we have tight hips and how that manifests is almost like a downward spiral, right? Because the more tight my hips are, the more I'm in survival mode. And the more I'm in survival mode, the more I want to do this and the more jaw pain I have and the more jaw pain I have, the more like I'm going to be sitting all day. And, you know, so 
but there is a way out, right? The way out is to realize, okay, do I want to be right about I have to make $100 by myself? By the way, it also comes with neck pain, hip pain, jaw pain, and stress, and a lot of what's wrong with me. Or what if I trust that I only have to make $50? What if there is a $50 that can just come and I don't have to work as hard? My neck doesn't have to hurt my hip. My hips don't have to hurt. And my jaw don't, my jaw doesn't have to carry all the stress. So really, we create our own reality. Do you want to work hard and make $100? Or do you want to chill and only make $50 and let God or Source Universe take care and give you the other $50? I decided I am done struggling with my hip pain and neck pain and jaw pain. And I want to live in God's kingdom, or I want to enjoy the abundance that the Tao source creator has given me. And I just want to go with the flow. I want to see the perfection that is me. I want to see the perfection that is you, Steve. I want to see the perfection of everyone in my life, 360 degrees. I want to see the perfection that every so-called trauma I have in my life was actually leading me up to the greatest service that I can provide to humanity. I want to see the perfection that, you know, everything is part of God's plan or universal plan. And I don't need to understand everything if I can just relax and enjoy the perfection of the now. I can honestly tell you, Winnie, that one of the biggest, call it mistakes, if you will, that I've ever made, you know, call it maybe the top five in my life, <laughs> was worrying about money, was worrying about money, because every time I did, it it all kind of worked out, and it was always okay. So I'm going to go on your side over there, I'll take the $50, and, <laughs> and my hips are going to feel better, and I'm not going to str be stressed out, because it all works out in the end. Why do that? Why, why, why it doesn't make any sense. You know, if you just have a little bit of faith in whatever, or have a little bit of faith in yourself, right? Yeah. So, you know, I am a really big nerd and literally I'm always taking classes from different, you know, Taoist masters and Buddhist masters and, you know, yogis. And because I really want to know how can I go to God's kingdom? How can I align with the source? How can I purify myself and give up all the struggling? And literally yesterday, I learned the secret is three things. And this comes from uh, Master Rulin's teaching. And she said, how you align with the source is order, connection, and harmony, hmm. right? So order, think about it. It's like having the discipline, right? Every day you're gonna like eat the right food, do the exercise, meditate, and take care of your physical, emotional, mental health, maybe pray and whatever spiritual things that you practice, right? And then connection is I'm connecting to myself and I'm connecting to everyone in the physical world and also in the spiritual realm, right? And then the last one is harmony. Harmony within my organs and harmony in my family relationships in my work relationships, in my romantic relationships, and with my in the way of my being with all people and all events. 
So, you know, if we want to have the greatest pleasure and the deepest intimacy and abundance in health, finances, and love, the answer is simple, right? The answer is order, connection, and harmony. I believe it. And, and connection is, I think, what I just said before. You said it better and <laughs> a lot clearer. But when, you, when you're connected, when you feel those those signals, those signs, and you quiet out everything else and the order, just having things the way they should be in your life and not even clutter, you know, just clear things out, wipe the slate clean. People don't realize that if you've got stuff all over the place in your office and your house, you got boxes everywhere. You're literally, and, and many people who are very deep in a metaphysical uh, realm have said that, you're just blocking energy, having that stuff. So if you have your life a little more in order and you have that connection and then the harmony, it all comes together. Exactly, exactly. Thank you for saying that because a lot of the times in my life, I have just been stuck in my shame and in my grief and anger and suppression, fear, all the things that we've talked about in th these 10 episodes and all the things that I talk about in my book, Honor and Darkness, I was just stuck. Mm. And if I look around my house, it's like, okay, do I have dirty dishes in there? You know, um, everything is related. How I take care of my physical life, like cleaning my house, how I take care of brushing my teeth, how I take care of my diet, my exercise, my spiritual health, everything is related. So I'm going to ask you a semi-personal question. Go for it. Okay. We're going to do scale of one to 10, 10 being, uh, like, for example, I'm going to ask you order, connection, and harmony, where at this point in time where you feel you are, 10 being, this is the way it should be. I'm, I'm at that point. And one being, I got a lot of work to do on that. So you personally right now, one to 10 scale for order, where would you say you are? And I'll tell you mine too. Yeah. I love the way you're thinking about it, by the way. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, you have to, right. I'm going to cop out and say I give myself fives across the board. And I'll explain why, you know, um, in the past, there has been parts of me where I'm a 10, like OCD on my order. Like I'm always on time. I'm like working out 10 times a week. I'm on these like juice fasts for 10 days. I don't, you know, I've had extreme order. I've also had times in my life when I didn't have any boundaries and I was just giving, giving, giving myself and just always, you know, boundless in my connection. And there's also been time when there is just, I want to call it fake harmony because it's not true harmony. It's just that I don't talk about the things that really bother me. So on the surface, Right. You know, I talk about this like on Facebook. I used to every Christmas post this picture perfect Christmas card where we pretend to have a happily ever after family, you know, husband, wife, perfect, parent, kids, perfect. But this eye level harmony is not because I actually have perfect harmony. Right. So I would say that it's almost. I've had tens and zeros across the board. And I think that where I am right now is I am, I like having balance. Okay. So the way the level of order I have right now is perfect. You know, I set the intention to work out every day, but if I don't work out today, I'm not going to kill myself punish myself as a bad person the level of connection I have 
it's fine. You know, I try to make time to call my friends. But then I also have time when I just want to shut out the world and go inside. And then the, the level of harmony that I have is perfect because, you know, coming out of a very difficult divorce that I talk about in the book and parental alienation, I also talk about in the book. It's like, finally, we are starting to get better in the co-parenting and having better relationships in my life. You know, is it absolutely harmonious? Like we agree and see eye to eye on everything? No, but but I really also feel that we are at an equilibrium state where if one of us gets triggered on something, we very quickly come back to the balanced neutral state. Yeah, so I would say I am overall satisfied with fives across the board. And I thought this was going to be easy, but now that you're you you're uh, rationalizing it, I'm seeing I'm thinking the same. Um, and for me, it probably would be I want to have more order. I feel like there was times where I was ten, and it really wasn't it wasn't serving me because, like you just said, it was too OCD. And like, why do you want to be all the way over there and worrying about dumb things that really don't serve you so much? But I'd like to, I'm, I'm probably sitting at a five and I want to bring it up to maybe like a six or a seven on the connection. Thanks to people like you, I would say, and, and learning, I would say I'm, I'm, I'm probably sitting at like a, a six or touching a seven on the connection. I think I'm pretty good with that. Used to be not, used to be probably a three or a four. And on the harmony side, probably five, somewhere around there. You know, it's, and, and it, it's always going to fluctuate, right? Um, interesting stuff to think about today, Winnie. <laughs> <laughs> you really, you, you, I think you made a lot of us kind of question our lives in a good way. And that's what I'm really passionate about and why I have mindful healing heart. You know, the heart is as boundless as the sky. So our heart can have compassion for all of our darkness and the heart is also, this is according to Master Shah's teaching, is also the receiver, right? So what that means is, you know, going back to when we started, my ability to receive your compliments, Steve, it depends on how open my heart is. If my heart is open, then your, your comment that I'm beautiful is very nourishing, if my heart is closed, it doesn't matter if 10 people tell me I'm beautiful, I'm still not gonna feel beautiful and I'm still not gonna feel nourished. So, you know, the mission that I have for myself and for the world is to open my heart and open everyone's heart around me. And open everybody's minds, which I think we've, done today. Mindfulhealingheart.com is the website. Uh, information on your books, Honoring Darkness, is on the website as well, right? Yes. And I also have a free online community. And every week I channel a message. So if you, know, you want to continue to listen to some of the dialogues we have here, go on mindfulhealingheart.com and click on community. And I look forward to hearing from all of you. Yeah, great talking with you today. And again, we, I think you opened our hearts and opened our minds to something that uh, is very important to move our lives forward. And uh, I thank you for that, Winnie. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. And talk to you soon, okay? Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. 